Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a fall reset, so I'm going to be taking you through as I reorganize my bookshelf, declutter my bookshelf. I feel like I have quite a few books I think I want to kind of just purge, donate to the library, donate to Goodwill, and then we're also going to be decorating for fall. So let's go ahead and hop into this. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Amy Marie, and I do a ton of mystery book content on this channel. So anything in the cozy mystery, mystery, thriller, historical fiction mysteries, all that sort of stuff. So let's go ahead and hop into the declutter. Okay, so I've already taken the books off the top two shelves, um, but I actually moved up the top shelf because I think that's gonna help with just the look of it. And I usually stack my cozy mysteries here, but I was running out of space, so I think this will give me some more space to do so. Um, the books on the bottom shelves here are more like nonfiction, and the very bottom shelf is actually more like yearbooks and like sentimental books from my childhood so we're not going to touch those because I've gone through those before and I'm pretty set in keeping those but I do have some stacks that I took off here I want to kind of this is the shelf that you kind of see behind me when I'm usually sitting in front of my filming area and bookshelf and I want to kind of color coordinate this like with fall colors so maybe like orange and black I was thinking would be fun um, we're also going to decorate here this is actually a double-sided one so there's actually this pretty pumpkin like fall theme on the other side so we're gonna flip all of that and then we have books down here to go through I have these these poor stacks right here I have some like random books that I got from like little free libraries that I didn't really look closely at so I'm gonna see if they're books that I want to switch out keep read etc so let's just go ahead and hop into this declutter Okay, so this is what I'm looking at right now. Um, just a handful of books. I'm pretty sure most of these I'll be keeping because these are some of my favorite series, but we'll go through them anyways. And we'll also do a quick look at my TBR card just to make sure there's, you know, everything on there I'm still interested in reading. But let's go ahead and start. Let's just go ahead and start getting into this because the pile is not going to get smaller on its own. Okay, so let's start off with some easy ones. I absolutely love the Noodle Shop Mystery Series, so I won't be getting rid of these. Just, I absolutely love these. They make me happy looking at them, talk about them a lot. Same with the Cheese Shop Mysteries. These are amazing. I have read both of those and loved them. Ice Cream Shop Mysteries is a new favorite of mine this year, as well as the Deep Dish Pizza Mystery Series. These are both great. Now, these are some of the random ones I got from the Free Little Library, and I think my husband has picked up some of these too, so some of them might be ones he likes or wants to read but I'm not necessarily interested in, so I'm going to put them aside for him so he has them. I think this is one he pulled for himself. I'm going to put this aside. I don't think it's quite my typical. It looks like it's a thriller, but I think it's a little outside what I typically like to read. So I'll put that aside. This one, I'm not really sure. It looks interesting. So this is like historical fiction about two different stories that intertwine. One that takes place in 1942 when the French police are arresting Jewish families and then six years later with an inve investigative journalist point of view. So this does sound pretty interesting. I think I'm gonna keep that one. This was something a family member passed on to me. It's like a survival story, a, a true life story, and it's actually about this woman who fell from the sky like from a plane when she was 12 and she was the only survivor. She fell in like a rainforest and I occasionally like to read books like this, but this one isn't quite one that's really calling to me, so I think I'll go ahead and donate this because it's in really nice condition, so I'm going to pass it on to someone who will enjoy it. Um, this one I haven't read yet. It's one of the ha Bad Hair Day Mystery series from Nancy J. Cohen. I really love this series, so I'll definitely keep that. Same with this. This is a new book. It's book two in the Clue Mystery. It's a young adult mystery series. I love it. I read it the first one in a summer wind blog. I'll link it above if you want to check it out, and it's just really fun. It's a reimagined story about the clue characters as like kids in a kind of like a private school and I it's really fun so I definitely want to keep that I think I got this from a free little library and this one sounded pretty interesting it's called what happens what happened to the Bennetts it sounds like basically like a some so at least a seemingly normal man in like a suburban neighborhood is attacked and pulled over one night when he's driving and his name is Bennett so that thus the what happened to the Bennetts so I think I'm gonna keep this one because that sounds like an interesting read 
So my mom really likes this book and she lent this to me along with the like part two for this. So I'm interested in reading this. She said it's a really fun, or maybe not fun is the right word, but very suspenseful good read. So I'm excited to read that one. This is a survival story that I think sounds really interesting that, again, a family member passed on. It's called Into the Abyss, and it's about, kind of like the top says here, what, only four men survived the plane crash, the pilot, a politician, a cop, and the criminal he was shackled to. And it's about their story, and that one does sound particularly interesting to me, so I'm going to put that aside for a keep. These next three are all Agatha Christie's. I'll definitely be keeping these. I love, and then there were none, and then these two I'm working on getting to, so we'll get, definitely keep those. And then I'm a big fan of Patricia Meredith's historical fiction writing. I absolutely love it. So I will be keeping the four books here. I have her new uh, Anna Catherine Green mystery series here. And then the other three are the first three and the only ones out right now in the Spokane Clock Tower mysteries. And they're all very good. So if you like historical fiction, check those out. Uh, we have two more from Nancy J. Cohen and the Bad Hair Day mystery series. So this one I have read and really enjoyed it. I definitely want to keep it. I just love the cover it just makes me happy and then this is a bad hair day cookbook which actually has recipes and like little short like kind of tidbits about the characters in it so it's really fun but I want to actually put this with I don't know if I want to put this with my cookbooks or if I want to put this with with the series I think I'll keep it with the series though okay so some more cozy mysteries I recently read the Amish candy shop mystery series for this collaboration I did with Tiffany from Beach Bum Bookworm I'll link it above super fun I loved this book I'll keep that one this one I also read for that botch for murder it's the Sophie Kimball mystery series I did like this book I actually am on hold for book one in the series for my library but I think I'm gonna pass this one along just because it's one I enjoyed but I don't really anticipate revisiting it and yeah, so I'm gonna, I plan on reading the series more, but I think I'll pass this one on. Same with this one, which I'm a little sad about. I love Daphne du Maurier's work, especially Rebecca and my cousin Rachel, and I liked Jamaica Inn. I think it's a very suspenseful book, but it's a little bit more, like, of a romantic tale, as the cover kind of implies, and it just, it's not one I see myself revisiting, whereas Rebecca and my cousin Rachel, I've reread and I love them. So this one I'm gonna pass on as well. This is one I started, but then I kind of put aside just because it was a little... I just wasn't in the right, like, reading mood for it. And this is a historical fiction cozy called A Play of Piety by Margaret Fraser. It's a Jolief the Player mystery. I do want to revisit this, so I'm going to put this in my TBR pile. Now, these are some of the random ones that I don't... I think we just grabbed at certain points. I know this was one my husband wanted, so I'm going to pull this out for him. He might have wanted some of these other ones because these aren't really ones that I think are quite my taste. So I'm going to put those aside so that I can get them off my shelves. Um, this one here was kind of random. It, 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 it looks like a library book. It was in the free little library. It's not... Like, I didn't, I didn't take it from a library. But um, it's called The Shamer's Daughter. This one sounds pretty interesting, but I'm not a big fantasy reader, if I'm being honest. So I think I'm going to go ahead and swap this out again at my little libraries. I love the cover. I think it's really pretty, but it's just not something that's quite my taste, so I'm going to put that aside so that someone else can enjoy it. These two were two more picks from Tiffany's video, and I just love these. Getting Old is Murder by Rita Lackin and Twelve Slaves of Christmas. Absolutely love these. Continuing both series. Want to keep those. Okay, this one I know I can definitely let go of. I actually read this for Summerween, and I ended up DNFing it. It just wasn't quite my favorite in terms of the writing style and the main character. It definitely has really fun fall and Halloween vibes though and I love the beautiful tuxedo cat but it wasn't quite for me so I'm gonna go ahead and pass this along. It's called 15 Minutes of Flame by Kristen Brecher. This one was fun. I read most of the series, the Mary Ghost in Mystery series by Kate Kingsbury. I felt like I think it was book two that I read. This is book one. I read book two and I didn't love it as much, but I really loved the first book, Dead and Breakfast. So I want to keep this because it's just a really fun one, especially for this time of year. This is what's getting hard. Is Flower in the Attic by Winnie Archer, a Breadshop Mystery. I have, I'm currently looking at this little stack over here too, and I have a total of three books from this series. And I really love this series, but I probably don't need to keep all three because I'm mostly keeping them to kind of you know, reference for videos and because the side of them makes me happy, but I can probably let go this one because Crust No One and The Walking Bread, I love the cover for Walking Bread, and then Crust No One was my favorite from the series. This one I really liked as well, but again, I can probably pass this on so that someone else 
can enjoy it. This one I haven't actually gotten to yet, Tranquility by Tuesday by Laura Vanderkam. She is a like self-help writer that I really enjoy, self-improvement. This one's all about calming chaos, making time for what matters most to you. This one just sounds really interesting to me. It's her new book this year and I'm really excited to read that. This I found in a little free library last year and I love it. It's Treasured Stories of Christmas and it's all these different classics. So you have like the Christmas Carol in here. You have different parts from uh, like Little Woman. You have like things from like Mark Twain, Charles Dickens, like all these different ones in here. There's even a Sherlock Holmes in here. So I just love this little collection. It makes me happy. I love Christmas, so that's a keeper. This one I don't think I was super interested in. I think we grabbed it from a little free library, swapped it out for something, but I don't think it was quite my taste when I took like a closer look at it because sometimes we're just, you know, quickly grabbing something and going. This one's about like a city that becomes flooded and I don't really love like these more, um, I, I can't say I love ones that strike a little too close to home, just like natural disasters, they kind of freak me out sometimes, like the idea of them, especially like a major one, like the city being flooded. So I think this one's a little too much for me, so I'm going to put that in the pass along pile. This is one I'm working through. This is a collection of the 50 greatest mysteries of all time, according to Otto Penzler, and it's got all these different classics in it. So I definitely want to read this. My goal this year was to read more short story collections, and though I haven't got to this one yet, I have knocked out some other ones, as you'll see. So I'm working on it. I plan on reading this one. Okay, so these are a couple more books that I recently read for a reading vlog. Again, I will link that one above for you. This is Curses Boiled Again by Sherry Randall. I absolutely loved this. I'm excited to read more from this series, so I definitely plan on keeping that one. This one, however, I did DNF. It just writing style wasn't for me. It just wasn't quite a fit for me, so I do want to pass this on so that someone else can enjoy it because, of course, everyone has different tastes and I'm sure there's so many people who would love this, but it just wasn't quite for me. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in like a little free library so someone else can enjoy it. This is one we found in a little free library. It's actually Agatha Christie's autobiography, so I'm definitely keeping this. I haven't read it yet, but I want to. I love this. Haunted Old West by Matthew P. Mayo. These are like, it's part, I want to say it's like part it's based, basically he goes through and he writes in like kind of a fictional way these like old legends that are told throughout the Old West and you kind of get to learn more about the locations, you get to learn, you know, like this one's in Idaho City and he kind of tells you about like kind of the history behind it, if there's any merit to the legend and then he kind of writes a fictional account based on that and I love this book. I think it's so interesting. Likewise, I really enjoyed this. This is Dead Mountain, The Untold True Story of the Dilatov Pass Incident by Donny Echar, and I really like this. He's a journalist who went to Russia to really explore this, like he went twice. It's a really immersive book. Um, whether or not you agree with this conclusion, I think it was a very interesting read, and it certainly presented a different ending and like kind of theory behind this incident than a lot of like different videos and things I've watched on it before, so I really enjoyed that. This is a childhood favorite of mine, The Christmas Doll. Does anyone else remember like all the classic book fairs when they were a little kid? <laughs> this was one I loved as a child. I don't know how it got in this pile. I need to put it on the shelf with all of my other like childhood favorites, but I love this. It's just like a heart of gold story about two sisters who have just nothing except this Christmas doll and it's just... Oh. I, sh I should read this this Christmas just for the fun of it. It's just so nostalgic and I just love it. And look at the beautiful absolutely beautiful like art on there. I just love it. Really beautiful book. Um, this is another Bad Hair Day mystery series. It's actually a short novella and it's a Halloween themed one and I thoroughly plan on reading it this year again because it's just so much fun. So that's a keeper definitely. Uh, Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. I really enjoy the series. I don't know how I feel about the future of it. I've read all that's out so far and I'm not sure where the author is taking it but I'm really curious to see where she goes with it and this book especially the first one was a knockout so I really like that. Another childhood favorite, I don't know how that ended up here but I'm real. I was really fascinated with any type of like mythological or fantasy creatures as a kid so this one's all about the secret history of mermaids which you can just see like the illustrations on here are just so fun. I loved books like these so it's a definite keeper for my childhood. We currently have eight donations, which maybe doesn't seem like a lot, but this is my second time doing it this year. I'm trying to be kind of, I'm trying to do it in like a regular basis. Ah! Okay. 
Well, this is the cozy mystery stack that you can kind of see behind me in videos. I don't think I'm going to get rid of probably anything in here because these are all like favorites of mine. They make me so happy just looking at them, but let's go through them real quick just to make sure. We have a Miss Fortune Cookie from the Noodle Shop Mystery Series. Love it. I love both of the Pizza Shop Mystery Series by Chris Cavender. We have a couple from Jen McKinley, her Cupcake Mystery Shop here. I love those. Do I need all of them? Probably not, but I really want them. Um, I love Abby Colette's Soul of a Killer. This one's really good. Reese Bowen, her 12 Clues of Christmas. Absolutely love this. I would love, I don't usually annotate books, but this one had such a complicated plot. I would love to reread this and go through and like annotate it and really break it down because she did, this was one of the most like complicated plots I feel like in a cozy mystery because there's actually 12 Clues of Christmas. She did an amazing job. It was just and I love this series to begin with, but this was a standout, and I love Christmas, so that's a keeper. Uh, definitely keeping the Rocky Road to Ruin, Ice Cream Shop Mystery. These are the other two bread shop ones I was talking about. I just, I love the cover on this one especially, and then this was my all-time favorite from the series. So we already got one out of three gone from this, so we'll keep those. Um, this is part of the Dangerous Type Mystery series by Paige Shelton. I used to have two of these. I did declutter one just to keep one for reference for videos, so I'm going to hold on to that. And then we also have Fatal Fudge Swirl, which I highly recommend for Halloween Cozy. Amazing. And then Against the Current by Olivia Matthews. I loved this. This is one of my like favorite new cozy mystery series that I've read this year. Cannot wait for book three coming out later. So those, yeah, that didn't seem like a very successful run, but like I said, these are some of my all-time favorite series, so I didn't expect to really go through that. We need to be honest with ourselves here. I am not a huge short story person. I've had to make a very dedicated effort to read short stories this year and I've gotten more into them, especially like Agatha Christie short stories I've really loved, Sherlock Holmes short stories, but I don't know what it was, but for some reason in high school I thought I like adored Ernest Hemingway's writing and I did like The Old Man in the Sea because I read that for school. But I do not feel the need to, to read all the short stories. I've read some of them and, I, you know, most of them are pretty good. But it's just, reading tastes have changed. I'm not going to read this. But I think this would be a really nice, I feel like the library might take this. Or Goodwill or something. So I will pass that along. This is actually an interesting set. It's Twisted Tales. So I think these are young adult books on three different classic, like, kind of Disney tales but they tell it from a different perspective so I'm really interested in that so for example this one here is about Aladdin it's called a whole new world but what if Aladdin had never found the lamp so I do like kind of fantasy books like that I really like retellings so I think I'm definitely gonna hold on to these and get to those okay so these stacks again I think are mostly favorites these are ones that I often have sitting behind me on that top shelf so not anticipating a lot here, but we're, we're gonna try. Um, Death Comes to Pemberley. This is a actually a Pride and Prejudice like sequel, and I'm kind of curious about it. It's supposed to have like a murder mystery in it. I found this in a little free library. I haven't read it yet, I, but I do want to read it. This is a short story collection that I'm, I'm working my way through all the Hercule Perot ones. Uh, same with this, Miss Marple. I'm working my way through that series. I absolutely loved this. I read this last year, Marmy. It's a, a retelling of Little Woman from the mother's perspective. I highly recommend it. And it's time. I love this because of how it looks on my shelf, if I'm being completely honest. And like I said, I do really love The Old Man and the Sea. But I've had this for a while and I still haven't read all four of them. And it's just, I'm just, it's time. I appreciate this book. I'm glad I had the opportunity to own it. But I do not need to continue holding on to books that I'm just not talking about on my channel or the ones that I'm not referencing or rereading or just that don't give me like joy every time I see them. Don't need that. This one on the other hand I do like Charles Dickens. I haven't read every book in here but this one is newer and I have read a couple of these and really enjoyed them. I love The Christmas Carol so that's a keeper. Okay. Oh and then this one of course Anne of Green Gables. That's not going anywhere because A this is gorgeous. This is the Seasons Edition and it's also one of my favorite classics so that's definitely not not going anywhere um again i love reese bowen her royal spinus series is really amazing 
This is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. This was my original Little Woman that I read. I've read this when I was a, a kid. It was a joke how many times I'd read this book. Like, it was over a dozen times. I adore this. It's so, like, water-stained, pages bent, but I love this book, and I will not. I will never part with that book. Um, this is Daphne du Maurier's Frenchman's Creek. I liked this. I really... Oh, this is hard. I do feel like I might want to reread this someday. I did really... It was interesting. It wasn't an instant love like Rebecca or my cousin Rachel, but I did like it. It was kind of about a woman's exploration of kind of trying to become more free from like her husband and society and it just it was a little random at times I felt but I did like it so I think I think we're gonna keep that I love a little princess this one always makes me cry um, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert I think this is a really fantastic book about creativity I highly recommend it I finished this this year and I was so proud Miss Marple the complete short stories I definitely want to keep this as a Christmas short story I want to reread um, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, I love this. It's one of my favorite classics. I do skip over the very lengthy descriptions, if I'm being honest, but I love, love this book. I also read this this year. I was very proud. The Illustrated Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Absolutely love that. And then we have Dracula, which I have not actually read. This is the only one of these Seasons editions I haven't read. I love the look of this, though. It's so sinister, and it's what I definitely want to get to. I'm hoping this fall or winter, I feel like this would be a perfect time to read it. We are going to do a quick speed round of my physical TBR cart, which is making me nervous. <laughs> um, let's... I can see a few books that I know I should pass on because they've been there that long. Deep breath. Here we go. Let's... Here we go. This one I got from a little free library. I just haven't... Thrillers I get, I usually read right away because just thrillers kind of suck you in. It's not like one I usually need to be like in a specific mood for, and I just haven't grabbed this as fast as I thought. So we're going to go ahead and pass this on or swap it out or something like that. This one does sound interesting. I bought this recently. I still want to read this. This is Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. I really like Jane Eyre, so I'm hoping to read that. These are a couple historical fictions that my mom gave me and that I picked up. Um, this is... I need to get to Miss Pinkerton by Mary Roberts Reinhardt. I've been waiting to read that, but I keep putting it off. I don't know why. This is a historical fiction I'm excited for. Nonfiction. This is it. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I have had this book. This is my moment of shame. I've had this book for probably five years. And I've tried to read it twice. And while I think the reading, the writing is absolutely beautiful, it's too sad. It's too sad for me. And maybe that's a terrible reason. But I am discovering that while I do really enjoy historical fiction, I am not somebody who reads, like, historical fiction set during wars, especially World War II, really, really get to me, um, just because they're, so, they're still so recent if you really, you know, look at it in terms of that's, you know, less than 100 years ago, unfortunately, and it just, it just crushes me when I read it. It really, like, upsets me, and I know, you know, you should probably feel sad reading that. It's not supposed to evoke happy emotions, but for me, I read typically as a form of escapism and this just as much as I'm sure this is like an absolutely fantastic book I mean it's got all the awards and the writing from what I could tell was just beautiful I'm just not somebody who typically enjoys reading books set during the war especially World War II so I'm gonna pass this on because I, it's just one of those books that every time I look at my cart it's just staring at me like why haven't you read me and I'm just we're just passing it on I'm gonna take Take my bookshop bookmark out and we're going to be at peace with it. Um, another historical fiction. I'm excited for that. Excited. Excited. Okay. So we, we made a little space here. That's good. These I feel like I went through pretty quickly. Um, these are pretty much all cozy mysteries. And a lot of these are from series I love, like Curds of Prey, Sprinkle on Time. I'm excited for those. I love Jen McKinley. I haven't read The Hatshot Mystery, but I'm excited to. So I think all of these I've gone through recently feel good about reading those. Okay, let's take a look at what we have uh, left here. 
Okay, so we have a total of 12 books for donation, and then I pulled aside four books that I will double check with my husband on, because I'm pretty sure he wants at least two of those for sure, but I'm going to check, otherwise I will donate them. So that's 16 books in total that are off my bookshelf, so I actually feel really good about that. I'm not sure how many books I have in total, and I don't, I don't want to count. I'm a little nervous to count, but I think that's a pretty good chunk. I feel good about this. I'm, I'm sad about a couple of these, like the Ernest Hemingway and this one, especially just because I know that like on paper I should enjoy them, but I'm just not. Like I've had them. Don't need them. It's all good. Or like this one, like I said, Breadshot Mystery. I really love this. I love this book. Like a lot of these I actually do like. Like I liked the Ernest Hemingway that I read. I loved the Breadshot Mystery series. I liked Jamaica Inn, but some of these I'm just not going to get to and I just... There's no need to like look at books and feel guilty. I want them to all make me feel excited to read them or happy that I have read them. And all of these are ones that I can just let go and, and someone else can enjoy. So that is what we're going to do with those. Those are going to be in the donations and then double check and ask husband. Let's go ahead and put the books back on the shelf. We need to reorganize because it's been getting very tight on my shelves, especially with Cozy Mysteries, and I really want to highlight those and show them off more. Okay, final rearrangement, I promise, I think. Here is Top Shelf, so we've left that the same. Cozy Mysteries, we're gonna put something kind of cute for fall here, I think. I did sort these from tallest to shortest to keep it consistent. Um, otherwise, bottom shelves are pretty similar. And then here, what I did is I used this little Hogwarts castle. These are the books that I have not read. These are all the books that I have read, minus the Sherlock Holmes volume, which I'm part of the way through. And then bottom shelf here, I actually moved some of my nonfiction like writing books over here to make room for when I was organizing over there. And I have a couple Disney ones, but mostly just empty space, which is really nice to see. So we pulled out the Halloween bin, and we also had some Christmas stockings in there, but that is besides the point. I think this would be really cute like here. And I think when I'm filming, you'd actually be able to see that too, which I think would be really fun. So let's do that. Actually, we're gonna put this, like this laundry door here. And I think that is perfect because it's not a door we use a ton, but it adds a lot of decorative value. Then we also added this little pillow here, which is one of my favorite like reading chairs. Really cute, excited for that. Definitely gonna keep this though, because that's perfect for fall. And really any time of year in my opinion, but let's just do that. I like it. We're gonna add a little bit some something else. I'm thinking like this. Be cute. Okay. I think that's like simple but nice. Really cute. I think we need like a little something on these shelves, something up there like we said. And then I'm thinking maybe this on top of those books. It's very lightweight, so I think it'll prop up. Yeah. I think that's cute. 
I am not a master decorator by any means, but I think that adds just a little something. We got the boo sign. Yeah, this is coming together. I have a couple of these small, like, little sparkly pumpkins, so I think I'm just going to scatter these around the bookshelf. Okay, I just found this, like, pumpkin strand. I'm not sure if this is going to drive me crazy or not, but for now, we'll keep it. I think it's kind of cute, whimsical. I don't know. It might drive me crazy. We'll see if it stays up. Okay, final look at everything we did. So added just a cute little pumpkin here. I use these to kind of sort cozy mysteries that I'm not going to read yet. Like these are all winter ones, so I'm saving those for winter. Or this is like the second book in a series where I need to read book one first. Kind of organize them in that way sometimes. But here we have some pretty pumpkin like reflectors. The spooky. Nicely organized. A little more pumpkin there. Added a cute pumpkin or so there. And then this one obviously very much an autumn Halloween vibe. I did sort out a couple books here. I didn't get a perfect color scheme, but we definitely have like a more purple, orangey vibe, which I feel like is very fall. And then a pretty witch's hat. And I added this up here, which has a picture of Scooby-Doo, because that's just quintessential fall time for me. So I've put the Sherlock Holmes there for now because I moved it, but we have our little Snoopy. And otherwise, that is our finished refresh for the bookshelves. Okay, so one part for me of a fall or just a general reset is just picking up a few new books, whether that's from my library, which you guys know I'm a huge fan of, or I was very fortunate I got to go to Barnes & Noble yesterday. So I did pick up a couple of things, including this game like a mystery game and I'm going to show you guys in a minute but let's go through the books really quick so a couple of these you're going to see on my fall TBR which should it might already be up if it is I'll link it above but one that I picked up because this just screamed fall more than anything else is called witch trial this is by Kate Conte and it says the evidence is spellbinding it's a full moon mystery how I mean you guys know I love red hair I mean I dye my hair red but look at the artwork and the cat and just the purple everything everything what color for you and bodies fall the most because for me I think orange and I also think purple like these kind of like witchy purples because of like Halloween those are the colors that come to mind for me I'd love to know what yours are our main character in this is Violet Mooney and she owns this like family shop with like different magical stones and like cures, remedies, stuff like that. And she's actually a descendant of two magical families and she's got like all these different, she's got like a sister she didn't know who existed, she's got like a mother or someone who's trying to tutor her and she's got a cat, a familiar, named Xander, who I'm assuming is this cutie on the cover. And she's just trying to figure out magic, she's just trying to figure out life because things are confusing for her right now. She's also trying to keep things going because there's like this reporter who wants to either like expose her or debunk magic, like he's kind of on the family's case so she's kind of worried about that and there's something hidden in her shop that connects her to that and then on top of that one of her customers ends up dead so we have a very very like heavily supernatural cozy mystery here not the biggest supernatural cozy mystery person like I don't read a ton of them but when it's fall I'm this is like the time for me to read this the next one is bread over troubled water a bread shop mystery by Winnie Archer I personally love this series we have Agatha the pug darling what a darling on the front here and I absolutely love this series I don't think I think I'm missing one in between I've read all the other ones I've had to my library doesn't have any of them so I've been buying them as I go and I think I've read the first six I think there is a you'll you'll regret or like a um, you'll murder you'll regret I'll put it on screen I need to pick up that one first for Christmas but I'm saving this for spring because it's obviously very springy our main character in the bread shop series is Ivy and she is a redhead. She is a freelance photographer and also a bread shop assistant. So tons of delicious bread making recipes. She's actually, this book series got me into making bread. I started making bread because I couldn't handle reading the descriptions anymore without actually learning to make homemade bread and it is it's healing to the soul just like the character finds it it really is love it a link of vlog where i made bread actually if you're curious so you can check that out but ivy is an amazing character she uses her photography skills to actually do sleuthing which i really like she also has this neighbor mrs branford who's 
like in her 80s and she is the best like side character and sometimes they will sleuth together and basically in this one Ivy is getting ready for her upcoming wedding her and her fiance are having like some kind of get together like party in the park they're celebrating when they find like her pug actually sniffs out the body of one of the bread shops customers who's this really nice man he's like he's always like kind of turning heads he has like a very big smile very big personality it sounds like and he's he's found dead um by the pug unfortunately and ivy's like i can't get involved with this like i have so much going on but then her bread shop mentor olea who is this wonderful character i love the female friendships in this series so much like multi-generational female friendships i love it i love it i love it but Olea is actually accused of the murder because I think he was eating like some one of her food items or something and ma maybe he was poisoned I'm not sure exactly but something along those lines this one I will be saving for spring but I saw it on the shelf and I just it got like I had to get it I had to, I love this series so much this next one is also gonna probably make a little sneak peek on my fall TBR because if this cover and this theme doesn't scream fall don't know what, what does it's called a dreadful splendor a novel by B.R. Myers this look at this so beautiful be careful what you conjure it's described as a mix of gothic mystery and romance now I'm a little confused on if this is an adult mystery or a young adult mystery I will put it on screen because on the back the author is described as the author of nine young adult novels oh never mind it says this is her first adult novel we found it we found the answer so this one has a very morally ambiguous or even a little bit of a con artist character. Our main character in this is Genevieve and she is actually a swindler. And she basically puts on these fake seances to like con people out of money. And one day she gets caught. But she's given an offer that if she can do a fake seance that's convincing enough to help this young lord over his grief because he recently lost his bride and he's just, you know, he's grieving, he's in a lot of pain, and the guy tells her, like, if you can do a seance with this, you know, his bride, and, like, kind of help him get over that, we'll let you go. Like, we'll, you know, we'll, 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 we'll like, call it even, right? So she's like, okay, what choice do I have? So she goes, but she finds out that the Lord doesn't actually want a seance, because he's actually convinced that his bride was murdered, and he wants her to look into that. So to fulfill her end of the bargain, she needs to solve a murder mystery. So this is supposed to be, like it says, gothic mystery romance. I'm so excited for this. This takes place in Victorian London. And then this one, you'll, if you guys have read any of these, let me know. But I'm really hoping it'll be good because it sounds incredible. So it's a modern author who's using Agatha Christie's character, Hercule Poirot, and making her own stories from them. And this one is called The Monogram Murderers. And I'm excited. So there's a quote on the front from Gillian Flynn. I was thrilled to see Hercule Poirot in such very, very good hands. So this one's a very interesting premise. Basically, Poirot is interrupted one night at his like quiet dinner with this young woman who comes to him and she's like, I'm going to be dead soon, but I don't want you to investigate my murder. And I don't even, like, how do you respond to that? Like, I don't know. I don't know how he responds, but I'm assuming it's like, um... Okay, but the next night someone else is found murdered and there's actually these monogrammed cufflinks that are put in their mouths, thus the monogrammed, and now Urkel Pro is on this case trying to solve if there is some kind of connection between the young woman's weird request and these murders. I don't know, it just, it really drew me in. I have not heard anything about this. I haven't actually read a lot of the original Urkel Pro yet. I've read a lot more Miss Marple and a lot of her standalone writings. I'm working on Urkel Pro as well, but this one just really caught my attention. If you've read anything by Sophie Hanna, please let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I really like it when authors take beloved characters and do like a rewrite of them. Like I've read some Sherlock Holmes reimaginings and I just, I like it. Let me know. Are you, do you think it should be left in the past, like the classic, or do you like the reimaginings? Because I personally, I'm for the reimaginings if the author, you know, does the research and really loves the character clearly and, you know, tries to do it justice the best they can. I like it personally. But So my husband and I got this because I thought this would be a fun date night. It's called The Sherlock Files Curious Capers and it contains three confounding cases called Dawn's Legacy, 13 Hostages, and Propagation. Propagation? So this is what the box looks like. It was... It was $24.99. I am a Barnes & Noble little member so I did get like two some dollars off of that but basically there's these different cases in it we have one with a 
investigation of family, friends, and business partners of a freshly deceased Don. There's one about devious jewel thieves and their loot vanished into thin air, which is the one that really pulled me in because I love a good heist. And then there's one about a truth behind a disastrous laboratory fire. You can do this with one to eight players. They're supposed to take about 60 minutes, 14 and older is the recommendation. And this is by Indie Board, Boards and Cards and Enigma Studio. And this is a completely standalone game, doesn't require like the big board game they have, I guess. So I'm really excited for this. I'm not going to peek in it right now because I promised my husband I'd wait because we're going to try to do it tomorrow, I think. But I will give you guys an update. Stay tuned with my reading wrap-up this month. I'll include this at the end if any of you are curious, just because I personally love escape rooms or puzzle games like this. I think it's so much